All right, what's going on, fellas? Uh, welcome back to the road to 880. I have just pulled an expert goober maneuver. Uh, I pulled into a parking spot, and there was a lady sitting in her car next to mine who like kept glancing at me, and I was like, I am not going to take my camera out. So I just turned my car right back on and just pulled into a different spot. So we're incognito now. Um, definitely looking forward to this session. Unlike last week, we're not going to be grabbing our air at the top. Um, my erectors were so fried. Uh, the more aggressive pace I was able to set for that new 6RM last week was awesome, um, but it was not worth the fatigue cost uh, to how much that took away from my other uh, training for the next couple of days. So we're going to go back to re-grabbing our air at the bottom, re-dropping our hips each rep. This is not something I recommend to most of my athletes. I think a lot of the time just getting comfortable grabbing grabbing your air at the top um, and setting a little bit more aggressive pace. Let's guys get in better volume and leads to better long-term development, better base building, yada, yada, yada. But in my case, as I've said a few times, my torso is so long, my arms are rather short, so my leverages are a little bit shoddy. I need to get a very, very maximal breath of air for my brace to make it a little bit less demanding on my low back so I can handle more total work across the week um, as opposed to someone with a little bit more favorable leverages uh, can use a bit shallower of a brace. I know like Sean Noriega talks about like not needing a maximal breath of air. Lots of people talk about not needing maximal breaths of air for their brace. I need as much air as I can get. So a quick overview of the session. Um, I'm going to start with a little conditioning as I've been doing. Work capacity has been coming up. It's been translating to do being able to do more event practice, more back off sets on stuff. All around, it's been great to push my work capacity up. I'm just making sure I eat a little bit extra so my body weight does not come down um, in response to that. Uh, then we got our weighted planks again because those have been going really, really well. Just using the belt, the weight belt, to be able to overload them. It's been awesome. It's been something that I can kind of indefinitely progress because I spaz and I really don't like when I exercise. I know inevitably, eventually, I'm going to outgrow it. That shouldn't matter. I should use it while it works. But knowing that eventually I'm getting like something doesn't scale forever, uh, I'm like, I need to find something that I could use forever. So these weighted planks, I mean, I could put three, four, or five plates around the weight belt and plank with it. So don't think I'll outgrow them anytime soon. Really, really liking those. Midsection feels strong. Strongest it's felt uh, in a while. Last time my midsection felt this strong, I was doing a lot of standing ab wheels per week, like a lot of total reps of standing ab wheel. Um, and this is a little bit more time efficient. Then we have the deadlifts up to a top weight of 700. Um, might do a back off depending on how much the big brace uh, of like spares my low back. Might not. We will see there. Um, then I've got my good mornings as I've been doing. Can't wait to rotate those back to squatting twice a week, but, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're going to keep riding those out. Um, might be doing a little bit of keg loading practice because the gym just got a keg and I have that in, uh, the medley in my upcoming show. So maybe I'll load a keg once or twice, then load a sandbag once or twice. We'll see kind of energy dependent. Then I'm going to keep getting after it on my cable rows because those need to come up. I do not yet have the upper back I would need for, um, the 880. So I really got my homework to do. Got to bring those up quite a bit. So I'm excited to get after it. Uh, do two, three, maybe even four back offsets kind of energy dependent. So we can kind of place a little bit of extra priority on building those up. Going to keep working on the Nordics. Uh, and then we have our swings and then we're done. Uh, really well fueled because uh, I keep waking up at uh, like two, three in the morning, like hard awake for a couple hours. So I figure if I'm not sleeping, what else can I do to recover? I could be eating. So I've been getting out of bed, uh, going to the kitchen and just going and eating a meal. So I've got one more meal in me uh, already than I usually do. So we're well fueled, slept like shit, but that's not too uncommon for me. Uh, big session. So I rewarded myself with a little energy drink. Normally, uh, I avoid drinking energy drinks primarily because they're expensive and that is an expensive habit to have. So I have my cheap ass caffeine pills, but today, we're, uh, we're treating ourselves to the cherry limeade ghost. I like these. My favorite, though, I think it's Rise, makes like a, uh, is it Minute Maid lemonade um, flavor? That's my shit. I really like that. All right, what's going on there, fellas? I've returned for the voiceover. Um, one of the things I was working on this session was trying to do the session a little quicker. I end up uh, taking longer rests than needed and also doing more general warm-ups than needed. So I think my big takeaway for next week is I'm going to do my like hanging leg raises and maybe my kettlebell swings at the beginning as a general warm-up. I mean, they're non, 
they're not too specific. I don't think they'll fatigue my primary movers too much. That way I can get them done as part of my warm up, cut out some things and make my warm up just a little bit more specific uh, to make this session go a little quicker because I feel like the same session done over a longer span of time gets more and more taxing, right? Having to re-get fired up, re-calm down, re-get fired up, re-calm down, longer time in the hot gym sweating in my case, um, longer time not eating, maybe longer time not hydrating as you should. Um, it ends up making the exact same session quite a bit more taxing. So drawing out this session has kind of been doing me dirty. So that's going to be my big takeaway for what I can improve next week. Um, again, we're always looking for apples to apples comparisons on these sessions. And compared to last time is in the middle of my wave. Uh, this is a set of four just like last time with more weight. Uh, I think we're up, I don't know, 15 pounds from last middle of the wave. Uh, same reps, feeling really good. Same pre-fatigue from the stiff legs earlier in the week. Next week we'll be dropping the stiff legs for some speed deadlifts. I don't know really actually care about the speed. That's just what I like to do for a deload workout because I find those like 60% EMOM work to be very not fatiguing and a really good way to kind of lock in my technique, keep that in the back of my head. So that's what I'll be doing. Next week, we should be fresh and looking for a nice, crispy all-time rep PR. So things are chugging along really, really well. So um, here we have my top set of 705. Obviously, I had it in my head that maybe pre-fatigued be damned, uh, I could take this for five. Also, this is not, ignore, eh, I'll change it in editing. On my screen, it says 705. This is actually 700. Um, five would be a huge all-time rep PR. I kind of had that in my possibility in my head, and I believe I could have done it, but I think that it would be drilling poor technique, and it would be more of a display of strength than a building strength type of rep, and it would take me quite a bit longer to recover from this session, uh, so I left it in the tank as much as it killed me, as much as I wanted that cool five rep PR. Uh, it is what it is. Next week is my week for the rep PRs and feeling cool when I decay a little fatigue, but I always have my hopes high that my rate of progression will pace out uh, in such a way that even on my pre-fatigued sessions, I'm crushing rep PRs. And sometimes that's the case, sometimes it's not. Um, the big thing is just not trying to force it. I can feel my first rep, I'm like, ah, actually this is reasonably strong, pre-fatigue included. Um, training is going really well, but I could also feel from that first rep that I didn't think I would be able to do a quality fifth rep. I probably could have done a fifth rep, but I needed to be high quality to justify it being week to week training, um, you know, build strength, don't display strength type of deal. The pacing of re-rolling each rep and re-gathering my breath is mind-numbingly slow for someone who's done that kind of Ed Cone controlled negative style of training for so long. This slower pace of reps really kills me, but it carries over, uh, it makes it more specific, so I feel much more proficient in my first rep, and being able to get that extra air for my brace, like I talked about in the intro, makes the exact same training volume so much easier for me to recover from, so it's a huge net positive. Obviously, I need to have that skill in the back of my, in my back pocket to be able to do the brace at the top reps for events where I need to rep things out at a little bit quicker of a pace. Um, here I've got my down set, just taking 585 for four. Gonna try to add a rep a week here. The main purpose of this down set is just preserving some rep endurance for the upcoming show. Um, while I'm training for this 880, and that's kind of an objective I'm keeping in the forefront through most of the meat prep, I also, the, it'll be a rep, deadlift for reps in the show. So in deadlift endurance is a quality I do have to kind of make sure it doesn't decay in the background. Um, then we moved on to the good mornings and wow, my back was toasty for these. Uh, uh, I ended up taking my top set, um, racking it a little bit early compared to what I was planning on, but not too concerned about it, not too pressed. It's just an easy number to beat the books on next week. Um, I believe my top set ended up being 300 pounds uh, for a set of four. Very bad. I could definitely do a lot more if I didn't deadlift heavy right beforehand, but I'm also not great at good mornings, and that's why I'm doing them. Um, if I was crushing numbers that you guys were oohing and on and about, maybe it wouldn't be the best selection of exercises. But I racked it at four because, again, I'm not trying to train my hip extensors maximally. I train those uh, with other motions. This is more about the kind of the integrity of my torso. And as soon as that starts compromising past a certain point, that's what's failing. It's not about the hip extensors failing. It's about that kind of spinal positioning starting to deviate. I felt that kind of go on the fourth rep, so I racked it and... You know, easy improvement next week with five plus. Hopefully going straight to eight, but we shall see.
Now getting towards the end of the video, right now my uh, my knee flexion of choice is these assisted Nordics. We're gonna ride these out for a while. They're definitely getting my hamstrings pretty sore, uh, more down towards my knee as opposed to a little bit higher on some other exercises. Knee flexion is knee flexion. We're overloading with time. We're putting in hypertrophy relevant reps and sets. I did a top set and two down sets. Um, they're coming along well. I really wish I had a nice seated hamstring curl, but you guys are gonna hear me whine about that forever. Uh, but knee flexion is knee flexion, it is what it is. These are going pretty good. I think I'll see the training effect I need from them. Even though this machine is super fancy and cool, it makes me feel much more strength athlete-y than just bodybuilder that does some heavy lifts beforehand. Um, I do really like me a seated hamstring curl. If it's a nice one, you can get a nice stretch at the top of every rep. After this, I did my rows. Rows are still a little light. We're building higher rep targets. So my rep target, meaning my top set, if I get this reps or above, I will add weight. My rep target is 20. So if I go north of 20, I add weight. Um, that will drop to 15. I don't know, whenever I can't get 20, we'll probably just drop the rep target. Maybe we'll do plus one, plus one till we get out to 20 for one or two more weeks to draw out that 20 rep target. Then we'll drop to a 15 rep target. Then we'll drop to a 12 maybe a 10. I don't really like taking my cable rows below that because I have to tack a bunch of weight onto the stack. I don't want to break the cable. Um, and also I find that I can keep my form standardized and really get in more reps where I can feel the stretch, squeeze, stretch, squeeze. I'm not using the swaying of the torso to move the weight, right? So I'm not hip hinging in order to throw and catch the weight. I'm hip hinging to position myself to get a bigger stretch and squeeze and stretch and squeeze. So the torso sway is there to get a bigger range of motion for the back but I'm trying to keep the speed at which that torso sways back and forth limited. And that's kind of how I can litmus test my own, my own reps, my client's reps is, yeah, torso sway is totally fine. Uh, in, in that regard, body English is good. But if that torso sway is very rapid, we're probably using our hip extension uh, to compensate for not actually using, our lats not being quite up to par for the weight we're using. Um, again, did a top set and two back offs, crushed my uh, rep target, I think at 23 or 24 there. So we're gonna probably go two or three more pins down on the, uh, the stack. And then as per usual, my camera died. Um, I'll definitely be getting a second battery for the camera in addition to the road mics for large lads. Uh, when I have the money, uh, which ho hopefully will happen sooner or later here. So because the camera was dead, didn't film my swings for you guys, but worked up to 165 pounds for three straight sets on the loaded kettlebell swings. Um, getting to the end of the video here. If you guys like the video, leave a like. Uh, the videos that get the likes tend to do a hell of a lot better. And when I ask, they get more likes, surprisingly. So I always thought that was uh, some silly thing that people did. I'm like, oh, that's very influencer-like. I now get it. It seems to work pretty well for the exact same video. If you ask for likes, people like it.